goes. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Madam President. You know, this term has been filled with many historic moments uh, from the opening day where, as we sat around the chamber, 18 to 18, the historic power sharing agreement brokered by the two leaders of the respective caucuses, and then moving through for the very first time the co-chairing of uh, committees by the members of this body, which I think resulted in fantastic legislation that was brought before this Senate chamber, all in a bipartisan manner. Uh, I know that seems to be the key word of this evening, and in keeping in that, I got a new appreciation for the members uh, and leadership that I had the opportunity to serve with, but I wanted to go back just a little bit, if I may, to June 7th when we had our constitutional adjournment deadline here in this body, and we didn't have a budget. We actually didn't, never had a vote on a budget, uh, and I think that was a historic moment. Uh, not one that we're proud of, but we can learn from that lesson. I think that's what we've done. So we came together and we passed a, a budget on September 15th, it garnered bipartisan support. That budget was ultimately vetoed uh, by the governor. And then the phone calls and the emails started coming in from our municipal leaders, our school officials, when the executive order was made public. What can we do? How can we afford this? What's going to happen? And there's more than just that. I had the opportunity and by request to visit a local chapter of the ARC in my neighborhood. And I sat with families there who said, what are we going to do with our sons or daughters now that they've aged out? The programs for the intellectually and developmentally disabled are closed. There's no place for them to go. Let my daughter tell you about her story where she go, gets to work three days a week at Michael's Jewelers, uh, my, at Michael's craft store, stocking the shelves with her job partner, waiting for the day that she has the skills where she can live independently outside of her parents. Now she sat at home because there's no more job partners because of the budget impasse. Her parents said, this short-term impasse has had a long-term effect on her. And they're hoping that the steps that she had to take backwards, she can recover and move forward and go that much further. And that's only one story after another story after another story I heard from these families. And the furlough days that the nonprofits that were required to take, and the days that they were required to take were the busiest days, the days that the services were needed the most. Why? Because that was the most cost-saving measure. And that's just wrong. And I think everybody in this body recognizes that. So after negotiating for a good portion of the, the fall season, it was determined that we'll meet in the House Democrat Caucus Room, which is a nice size, by the way. I have a lot of nice treats down there. Um, and at times, there were only eight individuals sitting in that room the four respected leaders and their deputies from the caucuses. And there were no labels, ladies and gentlemen. There were no R's, there were no D's. There was no scorecard that was taken. It's, well, you got one, then I want one. We put the policies of the state of Connecticut before our own personal interests. And when we think about our constituencies, whether we represent an urban area or a rural area or a suburban, whether we represent state employees, union workers, private businesses, every vote that we take here affects every single resident of our state. And that's what those eight individuals drove towards in that room. We looked at over a dozen ECS formulas, making sure that we got it just right so we can satisfy the previous lawsuits that were filed in the state, which got us to the most recent lawsuit that's pending and on appeal by the Attorney General. And we think we've got it. You've all seen it. Most of us have shared it with our school superintendents. They're excited by it. For the first time, there's a formula that they can count on. And in 10 years, 
they know that the formula will be fully funded and implemented. So they can determine, based on the students that they're serving in their schools, what their level of funding is going to be. We hadn't had that in the state for years, because we used to do a flat line funding. But now there's a formula that addresses those concerns. Our municipal aid, our, I know some of my towns have gone out and immediately ordered the salt that they weren't allowed to do, hoping that we weren't going to have a, a, a frost or snow before we reached a, a, a budget, because they didn't have the money to buy the necessary materials to get them through the winter. Hopefully after tomorrow when the House votes overwhelmingly on this budget package and the governor signs it into law, those monies will be released immediately to the communities that so desperately need them. The communities, our capital city, Hartford, we've saved them from the brink of insolvency, from bankruptcy. And I think by doing so, by having the smart people in the room, the smart people that are going to be serving on the Municipal Accountability Review Board, the smart people that are supporting this budget tonight, and all the residents in the state of Connecticut, the smart folks that know that we have to save our capital city. We've seen the comments from the, the different uh, credit rating agencies that they're lowering the credit and the bond ratings on our communities because of our capital city. This puts a stopgap to that measure. This is something that we all should be proud of, that we can vote for budget that addresses major concerns of the state of Connecticut. Folks that have been talking about different policies for a long period of time, and I'm not going to get into them because they've all been discussed this evening, but this is a vote that sends a true message to those companies interested in coming to Connecticut, that those companies that are here in Connecticut, that finally we provide sustainability, reliability, and predictability, that we hear your concerns. We are writing the fiscal ship of the state of Connecticut. We're about to turn ourselves into a new direction. And with that, Madam President, I am proud to say I will be supporting uh, the budget for us this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Will you remark?